the more likely, the more profitable the mine is, the more valuable the ore body would be. So you want to be, you know, in a higher IRR, uh, bigger NPV. Thank you, Terry from Power Nickel for taking our nice and my question. Now, my question is regarding the NI43101 and PEA, because I'm looking at your action plan from your invest presentation. And there's quite a few terms here that are quite complex uh, for the retail invest at home. So yeah, like I said, NI43101 mineral report and uh, PEA or better. Perhaps you can explain those terms in a bit more detail and especially what they mean for an investor. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, you know, the, the, the government the regulatory bodies in Canada came up with the, the NI National Instrument 43101 and they have another one for oil and gas called the 53101. And generally it's 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 designed to, to create a independent third party verification of a deposit. So that would give a, a investor some comfort that the company wasn't just you know, manufacturing news to suit its own agenda and pump and dump stock. So they generally, generally it's designed to, you know, increase transparency and, and, and reduce risk for investors. So that, that's a good thing for the entire sector. Roots out the bad actors and allows, you know, quality projects to get developed. So for us, we, we, we had a historical NI43101, but, um, you know, when it goes more than 10 years without drilling, it obviously has to be deemed with as a historical and you start really from scratch and you can you can use the drill cores if you you know you uh, do it appropriately which we've done and so we expect to have an updated ni43101 out in september with a with a brand new metallurgical study as well and that will provide you know sort of a economic uh, you know a mineral uh, you know uh, basis for a, a commercialized deposit we believe um, probably in, at that point north of 8 million tons of 1.5% nickel. So you would have more than 100,000 contained tons of nickel. Probably 50,000 of contained tons of nickel would be the minimum viable quantity for a mine. So we'll be more than double that. So I believe we're going to go from, you know, uh, you know, unknown to commercial status very quickly. And that's really the flashpoint for investors because that's when the big money is made is when you go from exploration to being deemed commercial. So I think that's, you know, we're in the process of that happening for for uh, Power Nickel. The uh, thing we talked about in our uh, action plan of uh, delivering a PEA next year or better is that we're in conversations with a, a major international uh, nickel processing company. There's a number of plants uh, and mines around the world, and they believe this is going to be a mine. They've uh, offered to finance a feasibility study for us. So we would skip the PEA, skip the pre-feasibility, go right to a feasibility, uh, which you can do. It's a, it's a compliant thing. You can do it. And, and obviously, uh, would, you know, obviously verify uh, the economics. So what does the feasibility study does? It basically shows you what the mine should make in terms of rates of returns, um, you know, as you go forward. So, for example, you know, and, and, and again, obviously it has to be validated through the process, but we would expect you'd probably have an IRR in this project if you went with a, a very high-end uh, nickel mine that does nickel powders and anodes and wires, which is what the battery uh, sector wants. You'd probably be looking at north of 50% IRR, and that's assuming the full capital cost of, say, $400 million. If the capital cost was subsidized by the government to the tune of a couple hundred million, well, you could probably double that. So, so that's why these things should have made such material impact in news uh, to investors because it basically makes the companies more profitable and lessens the risk for them to, in terms of getting into production, which is where the real action is in the mining. Thank you, Terry. That's for sure really interesting on the power nickel front. But I have a follow-up question regarding the PEA, the PFS, and FS. Perhaps you can walk them through in order and explain how much detail a company goes through and what information they normally bring out to investors at each different stage during the cycle. Yeah, so so the first step is usually a technical resource. So that's what we, the first one we would expect to have out in September. And, and that would sort of say, hey, we've got a, you know, a, an ore body of a sub certain uh, size and quantity and grade and it looks like it's generally economic, okay? And so the other steps, the PEA, Preliminary Economic Assessment, Pre-Feasibility Study, PFS, and Feasibility Study, FS, are basically uh, more thorough tests of this. So it, it, it takes into consideration environmental and social obligations. So in other words, are you gonna be, you know, are you gonna be able to process this ore and th at this site in a manner that's environmentally acceptable to the community that you're, you're operating in? Are you going to, is this going to disturb any 
uh, ancient uh, burial grounds or, you know, all these, you know, uh, is there any sort of rare exotic creature living there that's going to be disturbed? Like all those issues that could, you know, get in front. I mean, that's not going to be our problem because this area is quite is standard, you know, Canadian uh, tundra, really. You know, so it's not it's not got uh, any of those issues that we're aware of. So, uh, but those are the steps that you go through in these uh, feasibility studies. So, and then the other, the, the final, the feas final feasibility study, what it does is it actually prototypes a miniature mine, and it takes the ore uh, through the miniature mine process and says, you know, this ore when it came through this process yielded this many products, generated this much revenue, and then that based on that they create their forecasts of what you would do, you know, and they, you know, they have you know certain rules of thumbs on that, and they. They, and that becomes the feasibility study, and that it indicates, you know, the in, internal rate of return and the net present value of these projects. So that's, you know, from a common sense thing from an investor, you know, the, the, the higher the NPV, the higher the IRR, the more likely, the more profitable mine is, the more valuable the ore body would be. So you want to be, you know, in a higher IRR, uh, bigger NPV, and ideally a lower capex environment because uh, obviously the more capital you have to raise, the you know, then it becomes a question of can you raise the capital? And in the nickel world, there's really two two types of projects. There's the uh, low-grade uh, nickel sulfide and, and laterite projects, and they're usually quite capital intensive, a billion dollars or more. And then there's the high-grade nickel sulfide projects like Power Nickels, and they're sort of 250 to $400 million, depending on how advanced you want to take your nickel product.